Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. Hey, this is Mark Clifton here in Inglewood, Colorado with Mark Halleck. Man, Mark, hey, hey. it's so good to be with you. Today, we're going to talk about dissension in the church. So most of you can go ahead and turn this one off because you don't have any dissension in your church. And you probably <laughs> never experienced it in your ministry. But if you're one of the few people who have to have uh, deal with this on a regular basis, <laughs> or even once in a while... You may want to turn it up and listen, That's right. because we're going to dive deep into yep. how to deal with dissension in your congregation. And we really want to thank our good friend, Bill Ella, for this. Mm-hmm. He wrote an amazing article called The Anatomy of Dissension. Yep. Dude, Hillick. 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 <laughs> I, I know what you're trying to say. I know. Hillick, <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, man. This is so good. This is so good. I think you and I are both feeling like we could spend a day just talking we about this. We could spend a day just it's talking so about important. this. so important. So I want you to take yep. uh, the scripture, Hallie. Yep. And uh, you know that, hey, you love a podcast. You got to love a podcast where we read the scripture. Okay. Take the scripture. Read Acts 6, verses okay, 9 Acts through 15. Acts 6, 9 to 15. And here's what we see, okay? And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians and of those from Cilicia and Asia rose up and disputed with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly instigated men who said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, this man never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of of an angel. Now here's the deal. This is a scenario where you have religious quote unquote men attacking an incredibly godly man. Yeah. Now if you're not driving right now or walking on the treadmill, I guess if you're on the treadmill, you could do this. If you got your Bible handy, Mm, yeah, open your Bible to the passage Mark just read, Acts 6 verses 9 through 15. And we're going to unpack for you. I mean, this is Seven kind of seven characteristics. Man. Yeah, seven things we see marks of dissension. You're going to see this in people in your congregation, and it's going to give you a real heads up. These are, these are marks of dissension that Satan mm-hmm. has used since the very first century in the church. That's right. And number one, they rose up and argued with Stephen. Mm. People who are dissenters in your congregation that always bring dissension are people who are always looking for an argument. Mm-hmm. You're always looking for an argument. You know what I'm talking about. There are some people, you don't even want to bring anything up because you know they're going to argue about it. Yeah. It's just their nature, their predisposition, they're wired for an argument. Yeah. And man, Halleck, they flat wear you out. Oh, man. Joy suckers. That's what I like to call them. Yeah. They suck the joy out of you. And, there's, and here's what we got to realize. There's... There's some deeper stuff going on in that individual. Absolutely. There, there's heart stuff that only the gospel can heal. Um, but but he faced it here. They rose up and they argued. With Stephen. With Stephen. Now, now look at this. Now look at the second thing. Yeah, but let me say for a okay, second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I think as pastors, we get so tired of arguments, we quit trying to do anything. Well, that's true. Because I don't want to be argued with again. Yep. yep. And that's that's a death nail. Yes, that's okay. right. So they rose up and argued. Number two, what they do? Number verse two eleven is, is they moved in secret. Oh. This is interesting. <laughs> so verse eleven says, then they secretly induced men to say. Yes. They moved in secret. Oh. When, when, when you hear that. Clifton, what oh. do you what do you think about? I have PTSD, <laughs> post traumatic stress disorder, over forty five years of ministry, oh, where people were doing stuff in secret, in secret, right? Yeah, 
It's the meeting after the meeting uh-huh, in the parking uh-huh, lot, yep. you know? Maybe they all vote yes in the business meeting, and then they have another meeting informally in the parking lot and talk about how they're not going to support it, how they shouldn't do this. and they're, and they're then But then you walk out there, and they quit talking, and yeah. they never act like everything's fine. It's just, oh, just that secrecy <laughs> yeah. that goes on that is so ungodly, but is so much a part of people who yeah. breed dissension, yeah, just like right. they did in this passage. That's right. Yeah, and it's and that's the truth, man. We need we need light to expose that that dark secrecy. Only the light can do that. But some people don't want to walk in the light. They'd rather move in secret and in the dark. Well, this leads to the third thing, which is they stirred up others. So verse, in verse, verse twelve, 12 yeah. and they stirred up other people. Have we have we hit home with you yet? Do you have some people in your church who a <laughs> like to argue, b move in secret, and c stir up people? Stir, stir up others. There you go. Faces are probably coming to mind. I mean, now a lot of that is Satan is using that in their life, but these are people who need drama in their life. Mm, mm. They they find their worth in drama, and if it's not there, they're going to create it, right? Yeah, yeah. And and they they can't do it alone. They got to get other people to be with them. And it's, they're, some of them are extremely good oh, yeah. at communicating things in such a way that they can get people to buy into their dissension. That's right. I mean, and, they're and, good and, at and it. They, and because you combine that with the secrecy, they know what they're doing. Yes. They know what they're doing. They move in secret. That's why it's hard to pin these people down. It is. Because they're never going to admit it. But you see the fruit of their actions behind the scenes and how they're influencing people. And it, it can drive you nuts. And sometimes it's people who were your greatest supporters. Oh, yeah. I've heard on many occasions some guys tell me that the people who were on the pastor search team that were their greatest supporters, they find out one day they've been actually under the radar. Kind of undermining. Undermining them. Or, I don't want to get into this too much, but I have experienced sometimes a pastor will come and there's already staff in place. Mm. And on the surface, the staff is supportive, but... Mm-hmm. Behind the scenes, staff is sometimes sowing dissension, yes, yep. undermining. It can also work the other way. You can have a new pastor who shows up and he doesn't like the old staff. He's threatened by them. Right. So he can sow, sow dissension. It can work both Boy, ways. Boy, that's so true. It can work both ways. It can ways. work both but ways. But that whole argumentative, secretly sowing dissension, getting other people to buy into it, exactly what we see okay. in Acts. It gets it, worse. Okay. No, it <laughs> okay. gets worse, yes. So, number four is... They were unafraid to use deception. I mean, verse 13 says, this, uh, this, they put forward false witnesses who said. I know. I mean, they, like, they're unafraid of this. No. And it's because they believe the end justifies the means. That's it. That's exactly Our right. Our church is at stake. We got to get rid of this pastor. Yep. We got to get rid of this policy. We got to get rid of this program. If we shade the truth a little bit, you know, maybe it's not 100% true, but it could be true. It's not that big of a deal. Not that big a deal. Yep. And so they're spreading falsehood. Yep. And again, in, in the passage here in Acts, these men who rose up against Stephen, they didn't mind spreading falsehood. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Satan is the father of lies. Let's that's be right. honest. That's right. Lies don't bother him. At all. Okay? At all. At all. And that's, that's, what, he, that's what he traffics in, yep. is lies. So if these people are really going to be uh, influenced by Satan, yep. then lies are going to be part of it. Yeah. Right, it's not going to be the truth. They begin to justify it. They justify it, justify and they begin it. to believe their own lies. Begin to believe it, as, the, exactly as, right. as, as uh, George Costanza yeah. said, "It's not a lie if you believe it. <laughs> it's not a lie oh, if you believe it. If you it. believe it, that's right." Oh man. Okay, so number five. Okay, well, actually, let's review. They rose up and argued. Number one, two. They moved in secret. Number three. They stirred up others. Number four. They were unafraid to use deception. Number five, they attacked God's man with false charges. Yep. Verse 13, this man incessantly speaks against this holy place and the law. Which didn't happen. Stephen was not speaking against exactly. the holy place Exactly. That's the law. right. How many times have, as a pastor, have people said things to you about you that are completely false? Mm. Completely false, mm-hmm. and 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 charge you with something that's ungodly. Yeah. You know, you're not preaching the gospel. You're not preaching the right way. You're not you're yeah. not leading as Jesus would lead. Mm-hmm. And as I friend, as I said one time uh, years ago, uh, Tom Rainer said when his first church, he had some lady come up to him and basically said, "God told me you shouldn't be leading this church because you're not leading it the way you're supposed to." Mm-hmm. You know, and and his you know his my response he said was. 
well, he hadn't told me that, you know, <laughs> I should have been a little more kind and compassionate. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even, you know, he even heard yeah. that. And, and here they came to Stephen and they were speaking against him that he was, uh, speaks against this holy place and the holy law. They're going to criticize your doctrine. Yeah. They're going to find ways to make it look bad. Yeah. They did to Stephen. They do to you. People who sow dissension, truth doesn't matter. That's right. Reality doesn't matter. And, uh, man, they will, they, they're, they'll attack you with these false yeah. charges. Here's, here's the flip side of that, though, for us as pastors. If, you seek, if you're seeking by God's grace to live a life of integrity, yeah. of love for the Lord, of love for people— Listen, there are people in your congregation, they see right through this stuff. Godly people, there will be godly people Mm -hmm. who know, who can see when a godly man is attacked, they're able to see it. Now, you may not, you know, you may feel like nobody does. Right. But like, I've, I've heard of situations where there was a remnant of folks who brought charges against a pastor and they bring it to the business meeting. And the truth of the matter is those seven loud voices compared to the 50 voices that said we've watched this behavior from you all for a long time yeah because usually it's not the first time yeah. right this right. tends to be a lifestyle but sometimes mark in declining yeah. and dying churches yeah. the healthier people just leave well that's true and that's then a you good have point. a disproportionate number of these folks so again if you look at acts 6 9 through 15 number one they rose up and argued with Stephen. Number two, they moved in secret. Number three, they stirred up others. Number four, they used deception. Number five, they had false charges. And number six, this is so big. Yep. In verse 13, the man speaks against this holy place and law. Man, they they did their wickedness in the guise of spirituality. People will attack you as a pastor thinking in some way or another they're doing God a favor. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're more spiritual than you are. They don't ever come to you and say, yeah. I got a problem because I'm more sinful than you are, pastor. You know, it, it's always, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because I love my church. And isn't I'm that, this- again, how Satan, sp- you, yes. you believe he, he's a spinner. He spins stuff. Yes. And we spin stuff to believe craziness. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. And then the, the last one here, number seven, in verse 14, this is what they said about Stephen. We'd heard him say that this Nazarene Jesus will destroy this place and alter the customs Hmm. what they hated oh this is yeah this is good stuff they hated the loss of their kingdom and status quo yeah i mean our friend brian croft just said if you're not willing to be fired you really can't be a pastor Hmm. now that's not a license to be an idiot and get fired but people will sometimes they will they will protect their Mm -hmm. kingdom and their status quo and if they sense you under the leadership even of the holy spirit moving uh, moving them away from their kingdom and the church away from its status quo yeah they will rise up and they'll do these things that they did to stephen they'll move in secret they'll stir up others they'll use deception they'll have false charges they'll disguise it in the in the disguise of spirituality all because Mm. they don't want to lose control yeah this is their church this is their program this is the way they like it and they were here before you got here, and they'll be here after you. And you're gone. interfering with all of that stuff. And you're taking all that stuff, yep. guys. I, I hope you'll take a moment again and go back and read uh, what happened to Stephen, and then look at that in the lens of how that really affects all of us. All of us as pastors have experienced people who've done that. Now the issue is, Mr. Halleck, how do we deal with it? Well, yeah, this is the practical, right? You can look at all that, and you can actually feel overwhelming. I mean, I can imagine some of you are going, man. You just described what I'm experiencing. And frankly, sometimes guys just say, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm the, putting my resume the hope out. In this? You know, this is a bivocational thing. They don't pay me much anyway. That's exactly right. I'm, I'm out of this place, That's man. right. That's and right. And if you do that, then those who've done that against you just become stronger and it's harder for the next guy. Yes. That's exactly right. Well, I think, you know, one of the things that Ellis says is that he says, thankfully, Stephen gives us a model for how we are to react. And he responds with these twin values of, I think we would just, we'd say uncompromising truth and then seasoned with grace. So truth and grace, which again is so often tied together in scripture, right? Right. These two things. So uncompromising truth with grace. Okay. So here, so here's a question. Let's get practical. I'm wanting to get you're practical. De- you're dealing with dissension. You're dealing with those who, who bring dissension. They're, they're divisive. Mm-hmm. What happens... If all you do is show this quote unquote grace without any truth. Right. 
Well, then you get walked over. That's what happens. And that's what often happens. Guys want to be kind and nice and, and, and really don't expose the truth. They don't talk about the sin. They don't call it out. Yep. We've said before, and look, guys, I know Mark Halleck and I are sitting in a church basement in Inglewood, Colorado. Uh, Mark has a, a very healthy church and a good staff and elders around him that help protect him. You know, I work for the denomination, and I, you know, I, I'm not where you are. He's not where yep. you are. I understand how hard this can be. But look, if, if there isn't any problem in your church that can't be solved with uh, biblical, loving, mm. restorative church discipline. Yeah. Okay? Amen. That's right. And at times, we just have to do that. Yeah. And to not do that, it, the problem just gets worse until mm-hmm. they're going to fire you, or you're going to get so much pressure and so crushed, you're going to just leave. Yeah. And the problem's going to still be there. Yeah. And you're the under-shepherd. Mm. You're, you're supposed to guard the flock. Think of those poor people who are not part of this movement mm-hmm. and how this is going to wound them. Is it going to hurt you? Absolutely. Might it cost you your job? It might. Mm. But but the Lord knows where he put you, yeah. and he's not going to leave you alone in this. That's right. And he'll stand with you through all of it. What is right? What is the right thing to do as a convictional You're leader? You're going to have to confront them in you truth. You have to. You have now, to. Now, we don't have enough time left in this podcast uh, to really unpack all of that. Yeah. But go ahead. But let's flip it. Let's flip well, it real quick. Well, we, in truth, you need, to so, have, you need to have other people with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't do this on your own. No, right, 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 right yeah, yeah. Try to find some yep. other people in the church yep. to talk with. If yep. not, call your associational missionary. Yeah, that's right. Or your state yeah, convention. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And say, look, I got this person saying things about me. help. Can you help me? Yep. And don't try to do this on your own. That's right. right? That's and I've right. heard a lot of great uh, area missionaries, associational missionaries who've walked into a church situation and sort of, I've heard them look and say, hey, your pastor's right. Yeah. This can't be going on. That's been a tremendous blessing to a mm-hmm. pastor. Yeah, that's right. So, so if you don't have deacons or elders yep. that would kind of support you, talk to your association, talk to your yeah. state convention, even talk to some other pastors in town and let them Absolutely. help you walk through Absolutely. that. Absolutely. The, the other thing you, you want to avoid, though, real quick, is truth without grace. Oh, yeah. Okay? So that's the flip if, side. If, what, what happens if you approach it that way? Yeah. If you're all, all truth, no grace. Well, then you'll get fired and you'll be, just, you'll be as mad as they are. <laughs> And it's a little bit like what Rainer said when that lady came to him yeah. and said, God's told me you shouldn't be our pastor anymore. You're not yeah. leading us right. And he didn't answer her in grace, just in truth. That's he right. He didn't tell me that. Yeah. And, and it, you know, I've heard me say before, Dr. Rainer said, in retrospect, I should have said, really? Mm. How did he tell you that? Yeah. Because that's important. Yeah. And indeed, if I'm not supposed to be here, I need to know that. So I'm going to spend some time this week really seeking the Lord, uh-huh. making sure I'm supposed to be here. And then you do the same thing because this is important. Yeah. But if you're just saying this to be angry with me, right. that's not right either. That's right. So, I mean, it's sort of in love and compassion. Yep. Yeah. Uh, as well. And you it, says, be, yeah. it says here in the scripture, right? Yeah, it says yeah. that he had the face of an angel. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't mad. He wasn't, he didn't take it personal. I mean, he still, he understood that he needed to confront it yep. and confront it honestly, but he wasn't vindictive about it. Right. Yes. Exactly. And you can't let Satan pull you into this fight yeah. and make it, I know it is, it seems personal, but it's Satan trying to rob God of his glory from the church. Yeah. And you've got to, you've got to, Fight it in truth, but also in the love Amen. of a pastor. Amen. And well this is said. a wounded sheep. That's right. This sheep Remember that, who this is. This yeah. sheep that's biting you yep. is, is hurting somewhere, yep. right? And you've got you to gotta help them. Or yep. they're actually a wolf in sheep's clothing, mm. and you may need to get them out of the flock. Yeah, yeah. That's another story yep. for another day. Yep. And that takes discernment and prayer. And reaching out to other brothers who can who can help you. Yeah, and don't do this of. alone. But also, please, realize it happened to Stephen. It'll happen to you. Yeah. This side of heaven, it's going to happen to all of us who serve him. Yep. And we have to learn how to deal with it if we're going to be successful pastors. That's right. That's right. Hey, thank you for listening. Be sure and subscribe to our podcast. And if you've got people who have dissension in your church, send them this podcast. And actually, have them call Mark Halleck and Mark will speak <laughs> truth to them. All right, man. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, visit churchreplanters.com.